I am so pleased that the Irish Writers' Centre is marking its 30th anniversary by initiating the Irish Writers' Centre Climate Writing Group, Writing for a Change. You shouldn't underestimate the importance of this move because the climate crisis, frankly, needs creative writing and needs storytelling to bring out the urgency and to bring it home to people in their lives. Uh, it's good also that the group will be open to writers of every genre because we need diverse voices uh, on this topic. I even stretched myself, um, as you heard in the kind introduction, um, I uh, decided to write a storytelling book myself. This was after my uh, foundation on climate justice had just wound up because we'd achieved our objectives as a foundation. And I wanted to communicate the message better about climate change. So with the help of Katrina Palmer, I wrote um, a storytelling book. There are 11 stories. Nine of them involve women, but there are also two good men. And it's all about how not being responsible for the problem of climate, because they lived in the poorest countries and communities and small island states, they were fighting back to make their uh, communities and their uh, countries more resilient and building resilience against the climate shocks that they were suffering, even though they weren't responsible for them. And that, of course, is part of climate justice. Um, then I stretched myself a bit further um, because I decided I wanted to communicate maybe with a documentary and I was advised, no, you're not the right person to make a documentary. Why don't you make a podcast? And being an elder, I asked the question, what's a podcast? And uh, I was introduced to Maeve Higgins, who told me she was eight years old when I was elected president. She at the time and since is a su su successful comedian working in New York City and writes a lot for the New York Times and other publications. And she and I did a test and it worked wonderfully because she was only half respectful of me and we were going to be interviewing women about climate. Maeve didn't know about climate, so people were learning about it through her questions. She's terrific at asking questions. And of course, she has such a good sense of humor that we, we laugh a lot. And then we extended to our excellent producer, uh, Tamali uh, Kodakari from Sri Lanka, because we didn't want to talk to women of the global south and women of the south of the United States and be two, just two Irish women. We extended it also to Tamali precisely to get that diversity of perspectives that I'm encouraging you to have um, in, uh, in your writers group. Um, I'm also glad that you want to have a particular focus on positive solutions. When I talk to audiences, and of course I do this all the time, I try to encourage them to take three steps. The first step is to make the climate crisis personal in your own life, because it's that serious. And I say, you know, you know you're doing this if you do something more urgently than before, like, you know, um, recycling more carefully, um, using energy uh, more efficiently, or even changing your diet. Secondly, get angry with those who aren't taking their responsibility, uh, like governments, like cities, like corporations, like investors, um, because uh, they should be moving. We're not on course yet for a safe world and they have more responsibility. And then I say, but the third step is the most important. And this is the one I'd love you to really focus on. We need to see and want and be hurrying towards this world that we have to get to by 2030 and know we're on course for a safe world. It's a big challenge for Ireland and for every country. And it's going to need uh, excitement, uh, creative thinking about it. It's going to be a much healthier world because we won't have the fumes of fossil fuel, indoor and outdoor, um, which kill somewhere between seven and eight million people a year. And a lot of the deaths are women with cooking through coal and oil and kerosene um, and ingesting smoke and their children ingesting it as well. Um, we will have to have a more equal world because the developing world too will have had to have access to energy. Think of um, the 800 million people who don't have access to electricity in our world. They will have it. They'll have to have it by 2030 if we're going to be on course. This will change their lives. It will change the way they do business. It'll give them an opportunity also to have the green jobs and the green uh, future that we need. So 
I, I really want writers to excite us about all of this, as well as, uh, you know, definitely warning about the urgency and the crisis. There is a danger uh, that the crisis is so real, it can actually over, over, over all people. And that's, in my view, not the way to message. Um, I actually am going to end my short message to you with the words of the founder of the elders, which I now chair, Nelson Mandela. He brought us together in 2007. He told us we must bring hope where there is despair and we must have courage, etc. And then I love this line of his because it's so succinct and it kind of fits the climate crisis, which is a very real challenge to it. He says, it always seems impossible until it is done. Thank you and all the best to the writers group.